So two doctors in 1974 created the GCS, which is the Glasgow Coma Scale. The three things they wanted this to be able to do is it needed to be simple, so anyone could use it. It needed to be reliable, so it told them what they thought it told them, so validity. And it needed to tell them the severity of a traumatic brain injury. So think about all the times you've heard of GCS and where and when it's been used. It hasn't necessarily been used for a traumatic brain injury. That's where this whole video comes into. So what is GCS? Where, where do we use it? Where should we use it? Should we be using it? And what are the alternatives and the problems with it? This pair of doctors in Glasgow worked in a neurosurgical unit and they needed to assess the progress of traumatic brain injury patients. So they created a score so that they could track whether someone was getting worse or better. A GCS of less than eight was a severe traumatic brain injury. A GCS of above 13 was a mild brain injury or mild traumatic brain injury. So these two doctors needed a scale so that they can assess how bad a traumatic brain injury was from Glasgow, Glasgow coma, coma scale for patients in a hospital, in a neurosurgical hospital who had their traumatic brain injuries assessed so they could track progress. So a GCS of less than eight was a severe traumatic brain injury and a GCS of above 13 was a mild traumatic brain injury. The issue with that what today is that we use GCS for everything. We use it for seizure patients, we use it for diabetic patients, we use it for polytrauma patients. Even if someone doesn't even have a head injury, we're going to use GCS because, well, that's what we use to tell someone else the consciousness of our patient. The point is to be able to communicate with someone else the accurate consciousness of a patient. That's why they made GCS. So how should we use GCS? So GCS is the eye, so you have four, a maximum of four points for eyes, five points for verbal, and six points for motor. And so the ways that the score is actually designed is that they did not design the score to be GCS 5, GCS 8, GCS 10. It was designed to be broken up into individual numbers. So if I say my patient is GCS E could be three, V could be two, and M could be five. And now you know exactly where someone is losing points or has points. And therefore, whenever you are commuting a GCS, we actually should be breaking it down. On your paperwork, there's a good chance that it's asking you for the E, the V, and the M. They're not just trying to be difficult, they're trying to be accurate. But now, what are the problems with GCS? The problem is that it is designed for traumatic brain injuries and we're using it for everything else. Interestingly, if someone has eyes that are closed or eyes that cannot physically open due to swelling, you can put a C next to a GCS. So if they're GCS 7, you know, you put your points together and it comes up to 7, you would be GCS 7C for closed eyes. And also if they're intubated, you would have GCS 5T for tube. So if they had closed eyes because they were swollen and they have a tube, they would be potentially GCS 4CT for C is closed eyes and T for tube. So what are the alternatives? Well, there's something called a RAS scale. I have made a video on that. You come check that out. That's about how aggressive or calm a patient is. That's quite helpful to be able to transfer um, information to someone else about how a patient's consciousness it is. So if you can talk to them and they wake up or if they're quite aggressive, I quite like it. And then there's something called the four score scale. The issue with it is that it is complicated. Much like the GCS, we get all frazzled about trying to work out, you know, was the M, is the max, was it six points for M? Was it max five points? But now he's, he's decorticate or is it decerebrate? I, I can't remember the differences. It's decorticate cat, you know, you, you, you catch a cat like this, decorticate cat. Anyway. So the four score scale is broken up into your eye movement, verbal, brainstem, and breathing. So you can imagine how if I communicate with you the consciousness of someone and I involve the brainstem activity and I involve their breathing ability, you have a much better idea of their consciousness. However, if you use GCS, you're like, so, you know, he's withdrawing from pain. Like, how is that defined? That's also some issues with GCS is, it, is that it's not very specific on how you test. So there's the four score scale, complex, lots of numbers. You need a whole paragraph to understand it and then you can use it. It is effective, but it's complicated because it's a lot more to understand and a lot more to remember and to test. Because it's made out of four things, where GCS is made out of three things. But the issue is that in medicine or EMS, we have a system that works and a system that is effective and should be used more often and more accurately is called your AVPU. So awake, verbal, pain, unresponsive. So this is a scale that we can use to be able to communicate and also write down on paper and document the consciousness of a patient. If they are awake, then 
they're awake and you can put an A. And then by the time you drop them off at hospital, they're unconscious. There is obviously a deterioration. There's no confusion about whether someone is responding to verbal or responding to pain. If they are responding to verbal, it's it's not pain. They're not decorticate. They're not localizing pain. They're not, you know, like opening their eyes. Like whatever the case is, it's straightforward. Basic providers can understand, advanced providers can understand. And that is what is important in medicine. That when we have too many options, then we get confused. Kind of like if you walk into a shop and they've got every single flavor of Coke and Diet Cokes and Monsters and all these other kinds of drinks that you can buy, you're gonna be overwhelmed by a decision and so you're gonna take longer to make it. Where I believe, and I've said this often, is that in medicine, we just need one option. The less things we have to choose from, the quicker we are, are gonna to be to make a decision. So if you walk into a shop and all they have is Diet Coke, you're, you're gonna buy Diet Coke because that's the only option or you're gonna buy nothing. So that's kind of what this is also for me. Rather than me like taking a couple of minutes to work out GCS on a diabetic or a patient who's had nothing wrong with their head, they may go, they were unresponsive or they were responding to pain. And that is just a much more easy, straightforward, effective way of assessing consciousness.